guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. Okay. Not bad. Even with the time changer, I'm so glad to see you guys here. Um, all right, great. Let's start the day with... Hmm, we're going to do what we did last time. So um, we'll do Chatterfall. Each of you get to ask one question, and then the rest of us will answer that. But today, I wanted to be really specific. So I wanted to be specific to the topic that you're dealing with. So ask, remember how we did interviews last week. So taking from those interviews, if there's something that you're still curious about within your topic, what I want you to do now is ask that question um, and then nominate someone else to go next. But when you ask the question, everybody else responds to that question in the chat, just like Chatterfall, just like the exercise we did last time to begin with. Um, but this time we are doing it specifically for our, um, our problem question. Is that clear? If it's not, tell me, I will repeat again. Okay, generally silence means yes, it's clear. Okay, great. So I'm going to first invite let's see let's see let's see hmm Aditya why don't you go ahead and ask the first question uh, okay so um one second no. can I have a minute one second of course okay so my question is what comes to your head when I say the word pollution Great. So what comes to your head when you say the word pollution? I got your answers. And when I give you the countdown, five, four, three, two, one, and chatterfall. Smoke, unpleasant conditions, bad living, night. Nice question. Thanks for that. Excess of harmful substances in our surroundings. That is true. Like, I think, Nerita, would you like to expand on what you mean by excess of harmful things in our environment? Like, I get it, but I also want to understand if we are thinking the same thing. Yeah, so, like, uh, it is obvious that there would be some sort of harmful substances in our surroundings for, you know, but, uh, for example, um, if we consider air pollution, there can be some emissions that are harmful, but when there, it, it is an excess in the surroundings, it can also, you know, uh, start affecting a lot of things. Like, um, I mean, I mean to say that uh, there are toxic substances in our nature, but when they are in excess, they can, you know, have a significant impact that, you know, that is noticeable. For example, carbon dioxide, uh, though it is, uh, you know, toxic, but since uh, if it is in excess in our surroundings, it can cause problems like global warming and, you know, what we call as smog and, and air pollution. That's what, when we term it as pollution. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. And I know that there are more people than Christian Felix and Nerita in this room. So just, even if it's something jolly silly, um, just put it up in the chat. Whatever is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word pollution. And I really like, like, I asked Mary to talk because I feel like pollution is so connected to waste. Um, and I've been thinking recently, today what you guys are going to do is also connected to that. So I'm so grateful to other people for bringing this up. But um, just, does anyone know what the SDG goals are? And you can actually get this is my question. Um, what are UN SDG goals? Read it up in the chat. Nikita, your voice is pretty bad. As usual. Is this better? Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm just, we'll just have to do without my face. Great. So this is my question. If you know what, I mean, whatever you know about the United UN SDG goals, right? So the SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals. Whatever you know about them, put them up on chat. 
and five, four, three, two, one, Shadowfall. It's going to be so strange if nobody puts anything up. All right, cool. No problem. I completely get this plight of yours, and I'm going to quickly go over the SDG goals, um, and then we can we can take some questions and then continue with this game. Actually, you know what? Let's continue with the game, and then we'll take the questions. So from Aditya, let's move to Nerika. Why don't you go next? Your voice is again pretty bad. Like. <sighs> no, when you nah. ask us if your voice is fine, it, it's actually like fine for that moment. But then, as soon as you um, start speaking again, it again. I don't. Yeah, know. I think it's my video. Is it better now? It is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just my video. I'm just gonna keep that off. But cool. So, Narita, you can go next and ask your question. I interviewed the Lamis, uh, you know, this week, and uh, she, I had asked her a question about uh, how are stigmas related to mental health a cause in our society? So that would be my question because I want to know more about it. Great. So how are... Yes, question. The question is, how does stigma relate to mental health? Yes, that's the question. You can all type out your answer. And you do five, four, three, two, one, and try fall. Her question was, how is stigma? So if you want more time, and if child of all time isn't enough, that's cool. Just ask for more time. But the question is, how is stigma related to mental health? And this could be any stigma. Ooh, Christian, I love your answer. I think stereotypes and preconceived prejudice can make you feel bad and contribute to a decrease in mental health. Also, you feel depersonalized and objectified. Yes, so true. Okay, that actually, Christian, why don't we go with your question next? Okay, so I wanted to ask you how, how much knowledge of climate change, how much knowledge and awareness of climate change is there in your community? Can you type it out as well? Yes, wait a second. Thank you. I agree with you, Felix, by the way. <laughs> All right. So Christian's question is, how is the situation about community? Sorry. I, oh, sorry. How is the situation about knowledge and awareness in your community about climate change? Great. So take your time. Type out the answer. And five, four, actually, you can take longer. Don't worry. Three, two, one, and chatterfall. Hmm. See, this is why I find this so interesting. 
So between India and UK, you already have such a difference. With Rahul saying that nobody really talks about it here, which is true. Um, and Felix saying that everybody back in the UK knows and at least contributes in the smallest amount to fight it. Um, and that sort of gives you the idea of the problem that you're dealing with, right? Um, I've told each of you to concentrate on your community because I think for everybody, it's so differently placed. Like some countries are way ahead in dealing with the same problem while others are much behind. So I was saying that even within India, when you look at Rahul, um, Nerita and Sangamitra's answers, you realize that there is such a difference that's playing, right? Like they're so different, even though they're in the same country. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to take a short, actually, let's, let's have two more questions and then we'll take a break. So the first person to answer this was Felix. Go, you're next. Um, I didn't actually have anything prepared, but um, this is probably... Oh, you can ask anything. One. Um, what are your guys' like, favorite sauce or condiment? You know, like Heinz ketchup, mayonnaise, whatever. Let me know. Nice. Oh, Rick compliment. Well, I'll yeah. type the question, wait. Okay. What is your favorite um, sauce? Guys, this is fairly easy. Come on, help your cohort member out. Why is only Aman typing? Five, four, three, two, one, and try to fall. Ooh, Nando's Peri Peri is good. Hot sauce. Hmm. I really like pesto. I love the range of questions just because of the range of like sort of projects that you're doing. And this might seem like a really strange question, but there's a reason that Felix is asking this. Um, and thank you so much for helping him out with this. All right, um, I'm going to take one last person and then we are going to get into what are SDG goals. Uh, Zeba, would you like to ask people a question related to your project? Oh, okay. Never mind. Um, do I have any volunteers? If I don't have volunteers, I'm going to go ahead with Rahul. Um, I don't really have anything prepared. So um, can I just ask anything? Oh, wait. Just sure. Let me just open up um, my document. Just, just a minute. Yeah, it's right here. Um, so for so for all of you, if you're wondering why we are doing this, I'll give you a clue. Today's session um, is about figuring out who your target audience is. Um, because I think at this stage, you all know about through the interview, what I hope you've gained perspective of is what's the requirement in the market, right? Like if you have an idea 
you are more sketched out details as to what other people expect from that idea or what are other people's um, potential within the idea. Um, and today, I want you to start thinking about who are you building this for? Who is every product or service or business is going to have two ends, right? Like from one end, you're catering to the um, client. And from the other end, you're, uh, you're catering to the customer. Both client and customer are called stakeholders. Basically, stakeholders are anybody, anybody who is involved in this business. So let's say you are the CEO. <clears throat> You're the CEO of the company. But the company cannot function if it doesn't have customers and if it doesn't have um, people who give you the raw product or people who basically your clients, people who you are buying things from. So I first, um, actually Rahul, go ahead, ask your question and then we'll move into the session. Why, you know what, we can just move in then because I don't think yeah. I have anything prepared. All right, cool, no problem. That's that's perfectly fine. Um, right, so I was saying that what I want you to think about now is I'm going to break you guys out into breakout rooms. And what I want you to discuss uh, with your group is who are the primary stakeholders in your business if you have your if you're if you've joined from your laptop just open up a tab um, and start typing out who all have a say or a role in your business and that's what we are going to discuss when we go into breakout rooms you can also help each other out like a lot of times when you're thinking about the idea you're so invested in only who the idea is for, basically even the, your target audience, that you forget counting the people without whom it won't be possible. So I'm going to take Airbnb for an example. Okay, so before we go into breakout rooms, let's do one round of example. If I was to talk about Airbnb, and this we can do through Chatterfall, who do you think are the prime? Does everybody know what Airbnb is, by the way? If no, then just unmute and say, I don't know what Airbnb is. Uh, I have heard about it, but I don't really know. Okay, cool. I'll explain it. So, actually, wait, let's take something that everybody knows. You all know Uber? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Okay, yeah. so we take Uber's example. Um, so, what is Uber technically? Uber is a, when Uber was introduced, it was introduced as this device which would um a come to your location for a pickup until then you had taxi services but you couldn't call them to your location and you know like it wasn't point to point you had to go to like a taxi stand and book it from there um so that was one of uber's usps the second usp for uber was that uber even when they introduced themselves they came up with the idea of uber pool which is that if you're going from the same area to the same area, you could actually pull into a car with two, three other strangers. And therefore, their entire business plan was that we are really trying to save the environment by reducing the number of cars on the road. We are trying to pull people in. Um, and that was the second USP for Uber. Um, great. So these are your two main USPs. And you know what Uber is. It's a car rental service which you can book through an app according to you who are the primary stakeholders within uber it can be more than one it has to be more than one um and whoever is coming to your mind just write it down all right and when i say five four three two one and chatterfall let me see all those answers in your chat Okay, so people who don't have their own cars, great for me. People that need a taxi, yes. Taxi drivers, yes. All right. Um, who do you think owns the car? 
is the driver always the owner of the car uh, let's no. go for if you are the uber ceo guys you can just stop chatting you can just unmute yourself <laughs> so if you are the uber ceo what is the first thing you have to do before you can launch the app uh make sure that we have enough uh, vehicles and drivers to actually run the thing like uh, yes thank you so much that's the first thing you need to do even before i've actually launched my app i need to make sure that i have the back end in place so i have enough cars and enough uh drivers so i think uber's policy with their cars is different from country to country um in a place like uk i would assume that the drivers themselves are the owners of the car in india that wasn't the case when uber was um introduced in india they used to so it's like the cars could be owned by somebody else and their drivers could be driving it right that was a question but they said no that was my confusion because felix just unmute and ask um so whenever um i've looked at anything <clears throat> excuse me whenever i look at anything related to uber i would have well i assume that anyone who worked for them used their own cars to give give the rides because it is a ride sharing platform um but unless i misunderstood your question people said um no it's not their own cars that they drive it that depends was, was my whole question it depends i think in uk it could be in india before uber came the the way taxi services used to work is that there was one person who would let's say own 5 7 10 cars and they would to run the taxi service where you would go book a car and take the car from them right so within india uber came and capitalized with that pre existing structure so they got in touch with taxi services and said hey we have this thing called uber would you want to um have a permanent driver drive your car all throughout the day right so i think from that's other thing from country to country you have to adapt your idea the same idea can't work in the united states and in india it has to change according to what are the pre existing setup and what is the requirement of the people right um so so before you launch the app you need to have your drivers in place you need to have your um cars in place what you also need to have is a really strong customer care because when you're starting your thing you need to at least tell them hey if you're having a problem this is the mail id or the number that you can get in touch with and you need a kick ass app development team who develops the app for you okay great um these are your stakeholders who is the target audience for uber i think when i said stakeholders people also answered that question within like lamise's first answer which says that people who don't own their own cars is the main target audience for uber they are like these are the people that we need to cash on this these this is the main group that i'm building this product for right and the third thing that i want you to think about is what are the pre existing technology that uber is built upon think about this put it up on chat and 5 4 3 2 1 and chat for uh, could you repeat the question once more what is the pre existing technology that uber is built on is that clear now yeah do you need help i okay I mean, like you what, what do you exactly help? mean by pre existing tech though like do you okay how do you how do you book uber you well, open the app yeah, and yeah and then you 
it it tells you what to do on the app right the previous yeah file. but what's the first thing it asks the first thing it your asks location. is put down your address exactly your location do you think uber could work without google maps okay no okay so, GPS. so that's one exactly okay. gps is a is a core technology for uber uber can't work without gps you can't have point to point drop if you don't have the technology to identify the points mm -hmm. right Right. So, so that's one technology that Uber can't work without. The other technology Uber can't work without is online payment. I mean, especially now where everybody is so not, I mean, forget the pandemic. I think we are moving more towards an age where physical money is not required. Everybody is using digital money or at least on digital platforms. So this, the other thing with Uber was you could prepay or you could pay online. You didn't have to give them hard cash. That's another technology without which it can't exist. Um, what's the third technology? I think I think these two would be pretty much it. Like for me, I think the core technology is GPS, is Google Maps. If Google Maps was not there, Uber would be so much more difficult so now is it clear as to what we are looking at today and how we are thinking of it mm -hmm. cool so okay great it is 427 by my clock and i'm going to divide you guys up in rooms you will have 10 minutes and three people per room just talk about um who are the stakeholders in your idea? What's the target audience for your idea? And what's the pre-existing technology that you can use for your to make your idea easier? Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Great. And help each other out. If you have ideas for each other's things and you feel like, hey, maybe you could also use this or maybe these people can also be your um, stakeholders, just help each other out. All right, great. Your rooms are open and I hope you have fun. Now, what are the SDGs? Do we all know what the United Nations is? If yeah. we don't, it's okay. okay, great. If you don't know, just uh, just stop me and I will explain what the United Nations is. So before the UN was formed, it there was another body called the League of Nations, right? And um, right after World War II, they sort of dissolved the League of Nations and they formed the United Nations. United Nations generally, so United Nations has an entire um, department that's dedicated to environment, right? And the sustainable development goals were developed by the UNDP, which is the United Nations Development Program. Um, these are the 17 of the goals. So the, there are only 17 goals. Prior to this, there was something called the Millennium Goals which were on similar lines, but they were more generic. And so to around 1997, UN had a meeting and they said, you know what, this is like, we have these things that we've identified, but clearly it's not helping us. The greater aim was to um, save the environment and make policy changes, um, industrial changes, which were more in accordance to saving the environment. But that wasn't, it wasn't happening fast enough. 
right like it was put down on paper but in action it wasn't happening fast enough so um this the the sdgs were formulated in the early 2000s okay and the reason i want all of you to sort of see where your idea lies within the sdgs is because in the past 5 years um most countries that are on, on the un panel as well as united nations themselves have been funding and um uh you know creating grants and creating resources for companies that align with the sdgs so whatever company now comes up in the 21st century like they always tell you about what are the sdgs that i am handling or what are the sdgs that my company is looking forward to or trying to solve right the reason for this is that it's a internationally uh, recognized sort of uh, genre now like everybody knows about the sustainable development goals and it's always a good idea to align your business idea to the sustainable goals and no matter what idea you have it will definitely fall in one of these categories but i want you to now think of what and and it's a big possibility that it may actually overlap like maybe you have an idea you remember when we were doing the the problem tree how one problem kept sort of branching out to more than one problem so if i talk about let's say um people being unaware that could be because they are uneducated that could be because there was physically no money like there was poverty and therefore that sort of connects sdg number 1 and sdg number 4 and you know you will have these overlaps everywhere so take a look at these 17 and figure out where your idea sort of falls amongst these Yeah. Cool. Also, when you have the time, it's always a good idea to read up on them, because um, every funding, every grant that goes for startups um, looks at the SDGs, and it also helps you to to show your impact. Like, let's say you are. Um, I'm going to take one of the past uh, projects. Okay. Um, in my seventeenth, there's someone. who's building an app around um financial education so so this person anav is building an app um which is for his target group is very clear his target group is people between the age of 13 to 23 he just wants to look at that that tenure and he wants to see why is it that kids don't start saving up why don't we think of money when we are kids um and therefore he's building this app which is a i think it's a brilliant overlap of something like um like a networking app along with a edtech app so his app can help you get in touch with people in your locality you know a lot like what maybe tinder does like just tell you who are the people around you um and at the same time it can help you talk about money with them so he's linking it to a part podcast about money he's linking it to and he's organizing these weekly like he's he's not organizing them but he gives the opportunity to people to organize like a weekly get together where they can get to know each other but also genuinely talk about money like what is the issue of money why don't we start saving what's the stock market all of that um so and when he talks about impact he on he goes directly and he says you know what um my impact is in sdg 4 and sdg 10 because i'm creating i'm removing inequalities by educating people about finances at a younger age so that later on they can go and make the right decisions so when you think about impact think like just sort of categorize your impact within these um boxes that you see on the screen Okay, great. Um now that we're done with that, what I am going to do is 
we are going to get into this thing called an idea carousel, okay? And it may sound a little confusing to begin with, and therefore, actually, you know what? I think I can explain this better if I share my screen. Okay, so you all can see Discord on my screen. Yeah. In Discord, you have all your zones, right? Which are all open. Um, now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into each of your zones and I'm going to put up, like I actually know if I do that in each of your zones, it's, I'm going to go mad. I'm going to put up a question in your general chat, which all of you can see. What I want you to do is first and foremost, go into your own zone. So for example, um, Aditya will go into Aditya's zone and answer the first question. I'll give you three minutes per question. For the next question, I want you to jump to the next person's zone. So from for Aditya, for the second question, we'll go to Amal's zone. Amal, for the second question, we'll go to Aman's zone. Aman to Aisha's and so forth. If your next person, let's say, is absent today, right? So for example, Bailey and Aisha are not there. Um, so where does Aman go? Aman can check Aisha and Bailey's and if, if Aman sees that there's nothing written, then Aman will directly jump to Christian zone. Does that make sense, guys? Uh -huh. So uh, the second question, we need to answer it in the zone of the people uh, of the... Under you. Yeah. You just jump. So Christian, your first question will be in your own zone. For the second question, you'll go to Dominion zone. But actually, Dominion isn't present today, nor is Emily. So you will directly jump to Felix zone. Okay. Yeah? Cool. There is a set of so there is a set of I think eight questions, um, and also honestly, the idea carousel uh, contest like today's contest is to help you generate. Now that you've started thinking about target audience, about already existing technology that you can build on, um, and the third thing being, what is the like. What SDG do you put your idea in? Just go mad. Like there is no right or wrong. You can write whatever idea comes to your mind. It may be silly. It may be sci-fi. It may be futuristic. It's completely okay. Like this is just so that you let all your ideas out. And the reason we jump zone to zone is so that you can also help other people with their ideas. So when you, when Christian jumps to Felix's zone, he'll just read the last answer and the prompt that I have given, and then start giving ideas. But okay, maybe for this you can build on this is this. So what also happens is you start collecting multiple perspectives. You're not just thinking from your context, because as we saw in the first um, first round that we played. Uh, the first chat of all within India itself with the question of climate change there were so many different perspectives right and none of them are wrong like I could be in the same city as someone else but my reality could be so different based on where I live and such right so the whole point is that you get multiple perspectives on your own idea and you also help other people like and generally think about their topic, not just in one line, like in multiple lines. All right, cool. Okay, so everybody jump to Discord. I'm going to put your first question out. And I hope, right, perfect. If you have any doubts, I'm here. So just like, ping your come back up. Nikita? Yes. When you mean ideas, like what ideas are you talking about? Like our ideas or what? So you know your topic. You know that you want to work with, let's say, world hunger, right? 
So put yes. down all the ideas come to your mind. Like for example, you could write about. Um, so it's important that you write your first uh, topic. Like you just said that I'm working with world hunger, but in all the zones that is already there. Like if you just go to the top, you can see what the person is working with. Um, and when I say ideas, I mean things like uh, maybe I can take food from restaurants and extra food from restaurants and distribute it. Um, maybe I can design a kind of food that can be grown easily in someone's backyard. Um, or you know, like any any idea that has to do with world hunger or so removal of hunger. Are we writing ideas based on our ideas? Our yes. Yes. Okay. For the first question, yes. When you move to the second question, read the person's idea. Like if you okay. if you move to Christians, just go on top and see what Christians' um, zone is, and then give him ideas on that. Okay. Cool. Also, everybody, if you're listening, you can also tell like you can also just link post um, links of talks of apps. If you think if someone's working with language and you think Duolingo is an app they can look at, just write it down. Like this is an app I use. This could be useful. There was a TED talk I saw. Maybe that can be useful. Just like give them as many ideas as you can. All right, if you're done with your own, jump to the person next and your second prompt is on the general chat. The second prompt is, what does this idea make you think about? So if you've already jumped, read the person's first answer and then give them context, like tell them what it makes you think about. So the answer to this question, we need to answer on the next zone. Yeah. So Christian, you jump to Felix and you read Felix's first answer and then you answer the second one there. Oh, I answer the second one for me or for Felix? Oh, no. Somebody else will answer it for you. You have to now jump to Felix and answer okay. the second one for Felix. Okay, okay. Do so I jump to Aman's? Yeah, and you answer the second one. Is Aman with us today? Let's just check. If Aman, no. Yes, Aman is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you jump to Aman's and you answer Aman's. Nikita, if we don't understand the right days, do we ping them and ask? Or just ask them here. Just ask if you have a doubt. Okay. Um, let me. What is? I, I, I'm just a bit confused. Um, how are you gonna make an online store for unemployment? Like, what's the my goal? idea? My idea is, okay, I'm thinking unemployment like as my problem, right? But in order for me to solve the problem, I'm starting my own fashion line. So with that fashion line, it will employ people. You understand? Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. If you have doubts, put it here because I think it helps people also think through their ideas.
Okay, and just work it with the third prompt. So if you're done, jump to the next person. Your third prompt is, where do you think this idea could go in the future? What would you add? What does this make here, uh, this idea make you want to do? So just think about the future. How, how is this going to scale up? What is the technology it's going to use? And what would you add to this idea to make it more unique? Again, three minutes. Jump to the next person's um, zone to answer this for them. Okay, I'm now putting in your next prompt. Your next, so jump to the next person. And your next prompt is um, What do you wonder about the idea in terms of what is hard to picture? Remember the thing that we did last week about how to give a feedback? So this is where you actually also start talking about what is not working for you. Until now, you were talking about what is working for you. You were helping them build upon what are the positives, how you, how can you expand the business, what are the things you can use in the business. Now, also talk about what is it that you don't understand? What is it that you're finding hard to grasp or having doubts about actually implementing? So jump to the next person's zone, read the idea that has, that they've been discussing and tell them, what you find hard to picture in this idea yeah any doubts and here any clarifications just unmute and ask the person great we are moving to our final prompt which is name any app or product or even activity that this e idea reminds you of so jump to the next person and think of what are the apps that you use um, what are the websites that you use anything that or what are the YouTube videos that you watch anything that can help this person's idea grow just keep naming it Now it's, now it's actually time to really focus your idea. Talk about exactly what issue you're tackling and exactly how you're tackling it. From next week onward, we will start, till now you might have a lot of things in your mind. Like you may know that, all right, I'm, I'm dealing with this topic, but this topic, so I'm going to give you an example. Um, let's take Facebook. What's the problem that Facebook tackles or what's the topic that Facebook works with? Guys, what's the topic that Facebook handles or what's the topic that um, problem that Facebook is trying to clear? They oh help in, uh, increase interaction from, uh, they help people interact from different parts of the world with one another, I guess. Connectivity, I would say. Yeah. 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 Right. So both of you are right. It's connectivity. But there's so many other platforms that look at connectivity, right? Snapchat looks at connectivity, Twitter, Insta. Um, yeah. But if you if I was to look at Facebook and only take like the story option of Facebook, then that itself is Snapchat. Like that's a whole new product by using just one feature of Facebook. Similarly, if I look at just the photo upload option, then that's Insta. 
that's a whole different product by just using one feature similarly when you look at twitter it's the when you put up your status it's that one feature that was built into a whole different product and all of these products are just as successful as facebook is so to be a smart person is to try to see who are your allies that are already available in the market like you know you don't have to start from scratch there are already things existing around you and generally people look at that as competition but instead of competition look at them as collaborations and inspirations who are the people that just see look at something that you may consider as a competition and look at what is the aspect that focuses very particularly on your problem and how you can use it right the moment you're able to identify that you will be able to start building your product very specifically and then it won't stay general any longer cool um sorry sorry i didn't hear you well can you repeat what we need to focus you need to so this is homework for next week but in this week just keep making a list of who are your possible competitors like you know maybe uh, snapchat can say hey facebook is my competition or instagram is my competition but the way they've built it up is that instead of competition these people have become inspirations for each other these products so look around do some research and see what are the possible inspirations you can have for your idea what are the things that already exist i'll give you a really bad example and you're not allowed to use this but let's say you wanted to build a platform to increase people's emotional intelligence because you feel like people don't pay enough attention to emotional intelligence then you could look at school of future and you could look you could look at the week 1 mini skills and see how we dealt with emotional intelligence and then maybe you could take inspiration from that to build one product that only talks about emotional intelligence doesn't go into entrepreneurship prototype building none of that just focuses on in emotional intelligence does that does that clear the doubt Yes, I have only a question. What's the difference between stakeholders and target audience? Your target audience is also your stakeholder, but they are not your only stakeholder. Like we discussed with the Uber thing, the target audience was people who didn't have cars of their own, right? So target audience is basically your customer. Who is your target customer? And your stakeholder is the person who is your client in the back end. So So okay. if I'm a com- sorry go on so the the drivers the taxi drivers yeah all of them become stakeholders like if I'm a if I'm Louis Vuitton which I'm not but let's say I was then my designers are my stakeholders my tailors are my stakeholders um people who I buy the fabric from are stakeholders everybody in the back end is a stakeholder and then my customer is also my stakeholder who is buying my final product yeah all right guys we are nearly done i'm going to show you a very quick i think 5 minute video because i feel like all of you have such great ideas that they can really like you can you can explore them in a many different ways and i want you to think what is the best way for you So this is a small thing called the story of solutions because all of you are moving towards solutions. I just want you to think about what kind of solution you want it to be. If you can't hear the audio tell me. years old now everyone's got one of these can you imagine how much genius and focus it took to turn a music player into a handheld computer phone gps remote control for everything in life in just 5 years 
seriously. The thousands of people who made this thing had to solve thousands of problems that literally could not have been solved five years ago. That's what people can do when they're motivated to find solutions to problems. But the problems we've been busy solving are not the problems that most need solving. So much focus has gone into faster, cheaper, newer that we've actually lost ground on things like safer, healthier, and more fair. It's as if we're getting better and better at playing the wrong game. And in many ways, this system is a lot like a game, but with very high stakes. Just like a game, our economy was designed by people to get everyone to play by certain rules. And like a game, it comes with instructions telling us what the goal is. Think about the last time you played a new game. Remember? The first thing you did was find out what it means to win, and that guides every decision you make along the way. So naturally, the solutions most people are working on pursue this game's simple goal. And that goal is more. More money being spent, more roads being built, more malls being opened, more stuff. That's what economists call growth. So we take all the money spent on stuff that makes life better, and all the money spent on stuff that makes life worse, and we add together into one big number called GDP. We're told that a bigger GDP means we're winning. So it's the number that thousands of rules and laws are designed to increase. But there's a big difference between more kids in school or more kids in jail, more windmills or more coal-fired power plants, more super-efficient public trains or more gas wasted in traffic jams. Duh! But in this game of more, they're counted the same. Now, we can't change a game this dumb one rule or one player at a time. The problem is the goal itself. We need solutions that change that. What if we built this game around the goal of better? Better education, better health, better stuff, a better chance to survive on this planet. That's what we all want, right? So shouldn't that be what we mean? Changing the goal of the entire economy is a huge task. Of course, we can't do it all at once. But when we focus on game-changing solutions, we gradually make it possible for a new game to be played. To do that, we have to be able to tell the difference between a game-changing solution or just a new way to play that old game of war. For example, let's look at two solutions to one of the many problems we face today. The scourge of plastic packaging that everyone knows is a disaster for the planet, especially the oceans. And here are two groups of people with very different ideas of solutions to the plastics problem. These guys decide that enough is enough, and they start by launching a citizen campaign to ban the plastic bag in their community. These guys have a different solution. They start a business that gives people gift cards to buy stuff if they recycle their plastic waste. Both of these are happening right now, but only one of them changes the game. The gift card solution does keep some plastic out of landfills and incinerators, but creates more plastic by encouraging people to buy more stuff. Even worse, it teaches that more consumption is the right reward for being a good citizen, making it even harder to think outside that old game box. The ban the bag solution is harder to achieve, but it's a game changer. Why? Well, by volunteering their time, these citizens are declaring that there's something more important to them than just earning and spending more. To win this campaign, these citizens are going to have to team up with forward-thinking businesses offering alternatives to throwaway plastic packaging. They're going to have to build power to fight back against the American Chemistry Council, which lobbies for the companies that make all that plastic junk. And they're going to have to get out and talk to their neighbors and friends, inspiring yet more people to begin to question the old game. This is exactly what's happening in towns and cities all across the world, and they're winning. But containing a few million plastic bags transform the goal of the game, by itself, no. But in combination with millions of others working on game-changing solutions that they care about, yes, together, these solutions are beginning to turn the tide. As people build power to change the game, their citizen muscles grow. They work to ensure the local solutions they create get copied and scaled up. And when they see these solutions can flock by corporations with way too much influence, they team up with other solutionaries to fight for a real democracy by the people for the people. Gift cards will never do that, but thousands of citizen campaigns can. Whenever I'm asked to join in on a solution, I want to know if it's transformational. Will it change the goal? To figure it out, 
I use the word troll, I want to know that a G gives people more power, taking power back from corporations to build democracy. Oh, it opens people's eyes to the truth that once basic needs are met, happiness and well-being don't come by more stuff, but what are these? Our health and a sense of purpose. A accounts for all the cost it creates, including the toll it takes on people and the planet. In other words, it internalizes costs instead of externalizing them, as most businesses do today. L lessens the enormous wealth gap between those who can't even meet their basic needs and those who consume way more than their fair share. When I see a solution that does all that or can be redesigned to, I'm in. And they're popping up everywhere, like the evergreen properties in Cleveland, where worker owners are running green businesses, a laundry, a solar company, and a super productive urban farm that are healthy and safe. They provide secure jobs to people that the old game has left behind. We all know we need to get businesses out of our democracy, but cooperatives go even further and bring democracy into the businesses. Sustainable, democratic, and equitable, that's a game changer. Or in Capanori, a town in Italy where local citizens working with businesses and governments are not just seeking to manage waste better, but they're questioning the very inevitability of waste. They're promoting solutions to waste, not with expensive techno fixes, but by working together as a community to reclaim compost for the soil, to find reusable substitutes for disposable products, and then to put discarded material to use. They've already reduced some waste streams by 82% while creating jobs and building social fabric. And how about the new trend of collaborative consumption, formerly known as sharing? Sharing may sound like the theme of a Barney song, but think about it. It's a huge challenge to the old game. It gets us off the treadmill of more, 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 conserves resources, gives people access to stuff they otherwise couldn't afford, and builds community. What does it look like? Bike share programs in major cities. Online platforms that let us share everything from our cars to our homes to camping gear. In my town, the public library system lends out tools. There's just no reason that every house needs its own power drill, print blade torch, scanner, wheelbarrow, bike pump, when we can share. As transformational solutions like these gain traction, we will reach a tipping point if we keep focused on the new goal of better. Without a new goal, all the work we're doing to build a better future will be A, not enough, and B, really hard. Too much genius and focus will continue to go to solving problems like iPhone battery life, while the problems that threaten human life spin out of control. Five years ago, when we made the story of stuff, we started building a community of people who sensed that something was really wrong with this old game. We agreed there was a problem. Now it's time to build the solutions. Solutions that won't just change a few of the rules, but will change the entire game. Want to help? Come on, let's do it. Okay. So, I shared that because, could you guys see it? Please tell me you could see it. Of course I can. Yes. Okay, okay. I'm going to put the Discord channel. Um, but the reason I want to leave you with that video is because I want you to think of your ideas on that line. I want you to think about not more, but a better world that you want to build. Cool? Is that... Is, does that sound okay? Uh, also, like, what was the contest for this week? The contest is the SDGs. How do you? I'm gonna I'm gonna post this up on your Discord channels after your um, after this call. But what I want you to do is, and and you can take your time. I know every time I think you have too less time to build it. Maybe you can take the let's say Monday or even Tuesday to read up on the SDGs and think, start concretizing your idea, right? So I will send, um, I'll send like a PPT format to your Discord channels where I want you to just put down your ideas, like a proper business plan. Because the contest is building your business plan from everything that, all the ideas that you discussed in Discord, the SDG plans, target groups, all of that, 
put in one sheet and i'll put up the sheet on uh, discord uh, and did you tell the winners of the last week's contest <laughs> i will i was actually hoping to find to get a few more but i let me just let me announce both of them together also i know sangamitra that you've been uh, facing trouble i think i think that the platform is acting a little wonky yeah, i've already it's... yeah yeah it it's also acting wonky for me but we will uh, like i've told back end and i think they're already working on it if it gets fixed i will ping you and i will also announce the contest winners of last yes last week's contest um on discord works yeah okay thank you all right thank you so much for being here guys as usual it's been a pleasure i hope to see, oh this week is our mentor calls i'm going to text you all when they are and i hope we can talk if we can't every day from 10 uh, from 11 pm to like midnight i'll be on discord so whoever misses it catch me in that time i'll also put this info on discord okay cool have a great weekend and i don't know just like yeah start thinking about better and not just more okay thank you that's been great thank, thank you thank you. you guys thank you. bye bye bye, bye.